Hi dear friends, this is Dima, the tutor. Uh, in this video, let's practice a bit uh, the section of Duolingo test, which is called um, Duolingo reading. Uh, you see that uh, actually it's not like reading. Uh, yeah, of course you read, but mostly it's not answering the questions or something. You have to fill the gaps, you have to fill in these blanks with proper letters to form appropriate words in the sentences. Basically the task in itself and of itself is quite simple, you know, nothing, I mean, uh, technically nothing difficult here. So if you are watching such kind of a video for the first time, I think it will be helpful to you. And so we will now together fill those gaps and uh, of course comment upon it along the way. And you will see how you will feel the strategy, the approach, yeah, the algorithm maybe. Of course, you should understand that uh, the more words you know, the larger your passive vocabulary is of the English language. The better it is, the easier it is for you to fill these uh, blanks. Of course, but very often, you know, even I make some mistakes and my students make mistakes in these words. You see, for instance, uh, consistent of two letters or three letters. Why? Because you are agitated, you're excited, even anxious, and you have three minutes for this. By the way, three minutes are more than enough to feel all those things. But you're excited, and you just you confuse the letters in those primitive words. Or um, another very common mistake is. Um, wrong identification of the parts of speech and of the sentence, of course. So even like this or that, something like that. And people make a lot of mistakes there. And then only, I think, comes the mistake of uh, not knowing the correct word, of course. Uh, in this reading, we have also three levels, easy, medium and hard. I, uh, by the way, this text is from a hard level. We will now, we will now fill it. So, uh, of course, you understand, when you start the test, the system will give you most probably based upon your first uh, task, which is usually vocabulary, for instance. Yeah, the system will and uh, the vocabulary will be given to you. I think something easy or medium. Then the system will, of course, accommodate uh, the reading difficulty also to your abilities. So the first text of reading probably will be easy or medium, not hard. If the system sees that you cope with it well, of course, you will be given something something like this. If you deal with this also okay, then you will be given something harder. I will show you in the next videos. Uh, so this text, though, it is referred to hard, but, you know, I would say that it's not, not very, very hard, uh, which you will see right now. Uh, so my um, most, I think, just off the top of my head recommendation for you is, firstly, read the first sentence obligatory, then the last sentence. Read meaning not just, you know, uh, so dive, delve in it deep and so, no, no, no. You just need to understand what the text is about. Because very often students, they don't realize what the text is about, even having done it, <laughs> because Duolingo selects such text to mislead you, you see, to embarrass you. Uh, for instance, if uh, this text is about IT, why? Because I see firewalls are like security guards at the entrance of a building, uh, internet, who? <laughs> you see, but I know that firewall is from IT. If you don't know that firewall has to do with IT, you can work through the whole text and even finish it, and then you just you don't understand what it is about. So that is the problem. Uh, if you have a lot of time before your Duolingo test, then of course read various materials, articles on different topics, uh, sociology, IT, biology, anything. It will help you. If you have one week, um, reading those articles will not help much because you don't have time. So you, I think you have just to practice, practice such uh, practice test tasks. By the way, these tasks, all of them, they have been met by people at Duolingo real actual test. So it's very nice. But <laughs> even I heard from some of my students that they really they met such text again I don't know how it can be whether it's true or not maybe they were so scared during the text that they had some hallucinations here but I don't think so they are saying guys and that's why really if you practice uh, with me there is some probability maybe one thousandth of a percent but it exists that you will see something like that at your Duolingo test and I love this resource uh, very much um, so now, let's do it together, finally, yeah? You're waiting to proceed. 
Okay, we are reading. Ah, and yeah, and you have two basic things to do. Firstly, you try to identify the part of the speech, part of speech, part of the language, like noun, verb, adjective, adverb, or several of them, which can go here. And the second question is part of the sentence, like a uh, subject, predicate, what else? I don't remember uh, exactly other names now, but it doesn't matter much. Subject, predicate, or other parts of the sentence. Uh, so, and only after that, you're welcome to guess, I mean, to select, to sift through those thousands of words which are stacked in your memory and, according to the context, fit something decent here. So, let's start reading. As I, tell, as I tell you, don't ignore, please, this, because it's very dangerous to your success. Firewalls are like security guards at the entrance of a building, internet, etc. So, you're reading, you understand that it's about some firewalls. If you are okay with IT, you understand immediately that it's some programs. It means yeah, there are some programs, but at the end of, uh, here we have the comparison. Yeah, because like, they're like who, or like what, yeah? Who, mm -hmm. ID, car, of, in, div, here, comma, you see we have, hello, 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 access, to, various. I say two because you see automatically you hear that it is two, uh, because I don't know what else can be put here, to various pa, of the, you know, guys, I tell you that uh, when you have three letters and the initial T, the probability is 99% that you have the, the article the, or the, yeah, depending upon how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah, it can be two, or it can be tin, or it can be top, but here we have noun. You see, we have a noun facility. Here we have of. Uh, yeah, something like of teen facility, maybe, but you understand it doesn't make a lot of sense. So most probably, I tell you to economize time and to be to feel comfortable about that. If you see something beginning with T and three letters, 99% it will be article V. Facility on to hmm, with again the maybe later we will correct it. The proper cride and the uh, full stop. You see, so we have a long sentence. Long sentences usually pose a problem uh, to candidates because they have several clauses included, several clauses, several subjects and predicates, and of course guys get lost in that. So uh, here we have a comma, which splits it into two parts obviously, so here we have our first clause and here we have our second clause, maybe the third, but no, I, I see here no clue. And let's quickly skim through this. Access to these various parts of the facility is dependent upon the authorization privileges of the security level of the identification show. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but sometimes Duolingo puts here some words which are met here. Not always, but very often. So please be very attentive about that. So with your eyes, you catch access, for example, yeah, access, but we have here access also. Facility, facility, uh -huh, facility, Authorization, nothing like that. Privileges, nothing like that. Security, uh, no, here is security. No. Level, identification, no. Okay, so we have looked through. We understand now that it's about those firewalls, programs, and about antiviruses, something like that. So, uh, here, which part of speech should be here? What do you think? Which part of the language? Who, mm -hmm. ID, 99% mm -hmm. it should be a verb. Because, according to the structure of the sentence, we have who, who acts here um, as a as a subject, yeah? And then, usually after the subject, we have the predicate. So, it should be a verb. And we understand now that it's a verb. And so, just now, we have to define, we have to guess the correct word. Uh, the word here is check. How to guess that it is check and not like chill. You know, it's already up to you. Nobody can help you here, apart from your intuition, your vocabulary, your mentality, your good judgment. Who check then? If we have check, then uh, ID like what? Yeah, we usually check something. Uh, if there was ID without this and then of, then maybe here would be nothing. Then ID would be our uh, what we check. Yeah. But here we have something else. So this ID modifies something here. So this is a noun. And what can we check usually? You see, ID what? ID cards of uh, of whom? Again, yeah. Uh, so here we can have not a verb but only a noun. Because of what? Yeah, of who? So individuals. Here, individ. 
do else individuals. Yeah, if my pronunciation, my accent like, gets on your nerves, so I beg your pardon, but uh, individuals, yeah, of individuals. Then, a very popular structure, we have a comma, and then you see some word, yeah. Uh, it can be a noun again, but uh, in this case, it's not a noun, because here we have another noun, yeah. Now, noun, after comma, mm, not very probable. So, this is an ing form, this is a participle. Like doing what? It's a beautiful, beautiful structure. I highly recommend that you use it in your writings and speakings, especially writing. So when you do something, I love uh, walking in the rain, comma, like comma, enjoying something, yeah, or being thrilled or something like that. So this structure, comma, and then ing is very popular, very beautiful, and it will give you a normal score. So here again, I think we have some in allowing allowing how to guess that it is allowing you know the only recommendation is to enlarge your vocabulary in this case allowing access okay nice collocation to various bar of the facility you can guess here without my help i think we have a facility yes which consists of several various parts of the facility then on to hmm, with the proper hmm. to to whom to those why those? Uh, not these, because these would be in another context. You see, only to those with the proper... <laughs> let's stick to this word. This word you should only know, because to guess it, I think guessing it is, uh, seems quite impossible to me. I know this word. It's not very common. It's called credential. Cre uh, if to spell it in a Latin manner, credentials. I will show you. Credentials. Credential... Oi, I'm sorry. Crede... Ah. Yeah, I have lost. Uh, I have lost a letter. Yeah, credentials. You know, credential is uh, for you to understand it. If you don't know this word, when a business person or some professor goes to some conference, you know, they have those business cards. Yeah, business cards. So he gives you his business card, and on this card you can read something like John Brown. And uh, at the bottom of this page, some of the side, you see MSc, comma, PhD, comma, MD, comma, and so on and so. So these are called credentials from Latin credit, credit to trust somebody. So some things or some words or some symbols uh, that bring cause trust to this person. Of course, here they don't mean here they don't mean those letters written on the cards, but something which makes uh, something that makes you trust somebody so credentials yeah it can be words it can be feedback it can be anything yeah. so credentials and here we have only one word left which is only <laughs> of the facility only to those with the proper credentials only yeah you see guys some of these words you can only let's put it simply guess i mean just define or it's impossible even for me, I mean, to select the proper term here, like credentials, yeah? Or like only, because it can be, uh, here we can have several, several maybe variants. And you have to use your judgment based upon the context, of course. Anyway, I witness regularly how guys get lost, not only this only, but even somewhere like the or two, or parts they will sit for two minutes and think at this part by the way a uh, very strong recommendation for you never spend on one word more than let's say 20 seconds for instance you move along you have problems with this with this word skip it for now leave it blank and then go on you will feel here 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 then you will return never spend two minutes on this one word you will ruin your answer because uh, most probably you will get it wrong anyway and then you will not have enough time to finish, to complete this, you see. So that's why uh, don't please uh, kill your time on one word. Okay, guys, so uh, I wanted to cover several readings, but I think that in this video we are going to limit ourselves with this one. It's a hard level. At least the authors of the, uh, this resource claim that it is a hard level. Uh, judge for yourself, please. If you feel that with you it's okay and you would do it you're able to do it in one minute without my assistance then you know you can sway I think at something decent at Duolingo more than 120 
If you have uh, problems with this and you feel that without my recommendations and uh, comments you would not be able to finish it just overall absolutely then you have to practice 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 if you need professional assistance in Duolingo preparation you're welcome to address me uh, the contacts are the links are in the description to this video you go to my uh, little website and there you will see all contacts you know I help people regularly non-native speakers I'm a non-native speaker myself and uh, for me it's easier to understand and to feel the mentality of those non-native speakers I have helped guys from Ukraine and Russia and the USA former those uh, immigrants and everybody so several hundreds of people within these 10 years or something I have trained and tutored for IELTS, TOEFL now Duolingo is very popular so I assure you that, that I can help you to a large degree. Okay guys, I wish you great success at Duolingo and see you in the following videos.